Cultural competence is what teachers need to have, and this is the ability to work effectively across cultural groups. What this means is you need to be able to reach out past your own culture and work with families and children of different cultures and not think that you're that normal that we talked about earlier on in our presentation. Uh, some characteristics of a teacher that embraces cultural conference competence are listed in our star bullets. So first of all, we have that awareness of our own cultural perspective. This is the reason why I had you do the activity where on that continuum, you looked at each of the areas or categories and you saw if you fell on the more individual side or the more interdependent side. By knowing how you feel, you can enter into a relationship with people who feel differently than you, and you have a, uh, you know, that awareness that they will be different than you, but you really know your own background, and that's important. Secondly, culturally competent teachers have an appreciation and respect for individuals from other cultures and know that they're not different. Well, I'm sorry, they are different, but it's not that they're not normal, and, and that we need to have that appreciation. Uh, teachers that are culturally competent also have a belief that these interactions between cultures should be viewed as learning opportunities. Now you're going to have times where you don't agree. Uh, when we come, we go back to that chart we had a couple slides ago where you know maybe a family values um, quiet, stark environment and you have a busy, crazy classroom. That's going to be a challenge to understand each other's point of view. But this is a learning opportunity. This is an opportunity for you to grow as an educator and maybe try to incorporate some time during the day that has more stillness or some time that's a little more um, minimalist. Whereas the parents at home can understand that maybe they can try you know, to incorporate some more activity and see the value of each other's point of view because everyone brings something to the table and you both can leave better, richer, and, and that's important for this to work culturally. Culturally competent teachers also have an ability to identify and use cultural resources. So we need to know where we can go to find things that we can integrate in our classroom to culturally represent our populations. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you a lot of opportunities to explore cultural resources and find things that you would like to use in your classroom someday. We need to value all cultures. And as a culturally competent teacher, we have to have the willingness to understand the perspective of others. We have to understand that um, this is with any conflict, culture aside, we have to be able to put ourselves in the shoes of someone else. So we have our perspective and when it's different from someone else, we have to step away from what we think is right and we have to look at it from someone else's point of view. And th that ability to look from each other's point of view makes a very uh, powerful, respectful relationship. We're going to ask families to do the same thing. We're going to ask them sometimes to step into our shoes and look from our point of view. And when you've established that a relationship with a family where you trust one another to, to try on their shoes, then we have a powerful connection where we can really better the um, development of the child, which is, which is the most important part. Culturally competent teachers are flexible. They, they have a willingness to try things a different way, to change quickly, um, but also they have a sense of humor where they know that this is not every decision we make is the be all end all. We have to be able to laugh when things don't work. We have to be able to laugh when there's miscommunication uh, and not be so um, serious about everything that we encounter. The last uh, category or characteristic of cultural competence is being comfortable with the unknown. You are going to have so many situations where you as the teacher don't know what to do. You don't know how to communicate. You don't know how to get a point across to a child. Um, you don't know if the family is on the same page as you. You don't know if they're unhappy with you. That uncertainty is with any family when you're a teacher, but it, it's a bigger sense of uncertainty when you're working with families from different cultures or who speak different languages. You have to be comfortable that this will happen and not see it as a flaw or a negative. And from there, we can move forward. 
The last part of cultural competence is actually the opposite almost. Um, it, it's cultural humility. And this is the understanding that no one is ever going to be completely, truly, culturally competent. We are from different cultures. We have different beliefs. We have different values. And there's going to be uh, the ability that we cannot always understand why another culture does something because it's so vastly different from ours. And that understanding that we're never going to, or we will, yeah, that's right. That we'll never always, is that strange? See eye to eye on everything makes us um, have cultural humility. And cultural humility is very important because if everyone can understand that we're not always going to understand, then we're a little more open to work with each other. And we don't have that stringent, we have to always agree, we have to work this out. And these are the qualities of cultural competence that teachers must have every single day.